our task was to have a look at social constructivism. Um, and uh, although I'm sure others will take it further, we, 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 we ended up uh, arranging our thoughts into a bit of a pyramid because it seemed to reflect um, uh, how social constructivism as an approach to uh, learning um, uh, seems to lay itself out. The Egyptians were also keen learners. Yes. And, um, uh, so the idea of social constructivism seems to be a bit, you know, uh, along the lines of pulling things up by pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps, um, where you build upon prior learning constantly and continually, uh, which is what suggested the, the, the pyramid thing to us. But having done the pyramid, we realised we probably should have done it in a spiral because they talk about the spiral curriculum. Yeah. Mm. and the fact that it, it all builds up. It's a similar sort of concept. So the pyramid is a, a, a slice, actually, of a spiral. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you know, what came up for us, of course, is that on, on the sort of bottom layer, as it were, of social constructivism, there is a lot of epistemological problems. Um, the, the, the epistemic warrant, as it's known, in justification theory, you know, how you base your, uh, your knowledge you know, what knowledge is and what you can base it on. There's a, there's a great deal of controversy at the, at, at the root of social constructivism in this sense. Um, and a, a, a kind of um, balance between the strong social constructivist approach and the weak social constructivist approach. Uh, the strong social constructivists would suggest that there is no such thing as any objective knowledge. There is only knowledge that we've built up over time in a social context. Um, of course, uh, that kind of bumps into uh, serious problems when you get involved with any kind of empirical knowledge where you are doing things with experiments and that you know, objective reality kind of bumps along and says, no, we're here actually. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, there's this sort of foundational uh, problem, if you like, between those who believe that, uh, probably quite rightly, that everything we know about a table is social. Um, and those who believe that that also means that wood and metal don't have any objective reality either. <laughs> um, Unless you're hit with a table leg. Absolutely. Differently. <laughs> so, then you've experienced it phenomenologically. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and personally. Yeah. So then I, I suppose it, it sort of it, it moved up into, well, we thought, well, it, actually there's a lot of this is tacit knowledge, um, which is the stuff that you know all the time that's always there, uh, without having to think about, like, how to walk, you know, we just get on with that all the time. So, underneath this layer of tacit knowledge, there's, there's lots of questions and epistemological this quicksand. Thing. Quicksand, yeah. But above it, it's much more clear in terms of um, how a, a, a social constructivist, probably a weak social, social constructivist theory of learning might then build that there's this continual spiral of uh, learning from what uh, was has come before, and um, uh, I, I think the, 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 there was a, the idea of theory-laden observation, which comes again out of uh, more hard science approaches, um, where w when you observe something, uh, you already have a theory in your mind, and it, almost inevitably you see what you were looking for, and you might miss other stuff. Um, that's a kind of recognised uh, element of hard science, as it were. Um, but a lot of the social constructivists come along and say, well, that covers 100% of all scientific knowledge. And they say, well, no, actually, no, 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 there is, there is quite a lot of stuff going on that we're observing that is not necessarily quite so theory-laden. So, that, so that there's that, that, that um, uh, thing going on as well. Um, do you want to? Mm, well, I take just think that, that on a sort of slightly simpler, less philosophical level, I think uh, the fact that the way my brain works on a much more simple level um, is that um, uh, the idea of social constructivism is that you're building on your, your, your knowledge blocks to gain more and more knowledge. But until that acquires some meaning, until you get into the deep learning and it acquires some meaning, and actually it affects change within the learner themselves so that they can not just apply it, but they can make connections and that it has actually changed their perception of what they previously knew. But uh, they haven't really got into that kind of paradigm shift, if you like, at the top, um, which means that they have 
totally absorbed something that they've learned and are now in a position to apply it. And that can happen through collective learning as well as individual learning. And so it's a sort of social element of it, I suppose, in a way. But the constructivist element is that you are building on these blocks and that gradually the pen drops and you start to be able to make um, connections between the things you've learned and apply that learning to something else. And in a sense, I mean, you do that through experiential learning as well, don't you? You do it through all these theories. It's the, they all have that in common, essentially. I was going to pick up from that, though, because it moves the, the social constructivism moves away from the teacher-learner idea and says, OK, we all come with a set of knowledge and we learn that and build those blocks yeah, as a collaborative thing within a group. Um, and so moving much more away from what we've said about sort of a teacher standing there and, and presenting a lot of information, but actually that teacher becomes more of a guide but part of that group in a, in a supportive kind of uh, nature. And, and that all, all the people involved are you know, part of a paradigm which, um, according to the structure of scientific revolutions and the coup and very, <coughs> get much deeper into that with Foucault. Um, that this paradigm will, uh, uh, from time to time, break, mm -hmm. and a new one will come up, uh, come together, mm -hmm. because there is an element of knowledge that is fundamentally social, and the social constructivism thing is kind of underlining that. Mm -hmm. um, the argument, of course, down at the bottom is how much of it is social and how much of it is objective. Mm -hmm. But also, if we said before that you everywhere that you go, you're in a learning environment and that it shouldn't just take place within a classroom lecture theatre, then effectively, as an individual, you're learning within that group um, all, all the time and you're, you're learning constantly. It's not just a case of a one-to-one -one basis. You come with this knowledge, you gather it all together, you come away with more knowledge and, like you said, it's, it's a change, isn't it, that happens within you? Yes. So the individual takes a lot from the collaborative group work. Hence the social aspect mm. of it. it. Took us quite a while to work that out. Can I just say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That learning is fundamentally within groups. That yeah. it is social. Mm. That's 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 kind of what the theory is ultimately yeah. pointing at. Good group project then. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The, the the act of actually editing the Wikipedia page was in itself social constructivism because yes. we each met this morning and we came with an idea of what we believed it was and sat down, discussed that, kind of worked out what we thought it was, argued out a few theories and then kind of edited this Wikipedia page. It's terrific though, you're enacting the ideas underpinning this yes. through the way you investigate it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're modelling what it is yeah. as you explore what it might yeah. be.